Now, from the makers of Coldwater Omo... In the fog-shrouded grounds of Sir Cavalier Rausicana's estate... Ah, there you are. How did you get on? I really think I worried her, Ula. I really worried her. Just worried? Funniest caper I've ever been on. Why try and scare her to death? I've told you, it's a joke. A practical joke. Well, take my word for it, that woman in the house doesn't scare easily. Look, I've done my job. I want to be paid off. Of course, but you haven't finished yet. You have to scream. You haven't given us the scream. Okay. I'll give you a real blood curdler. Ah! Ah, good enough? <laughs> no, I'm afraid it isn't. I think we need the real thing. Don't you? Ula turned her head slightly and looked over one shoulder. The bushes parted, and a huge figure of a man loomed out of the fog. A large, hairy hand tightened its grip round a pistol. No! 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 Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Once an OMO user, always an OMO user. Because it gets out the worst dirt and stains. Mrs. Francis of Port Elizabeth found that OMO cleaned her husband's bathing trunks. He used to come home and they'd be marked and splodged with tar and uh, oil from our beach. Well, he wanted to throw them away. So I said, well, he'd soak them over and out on cold water OMO. And the next day they were shimmering white again. Cold water OMO cleans best. Over a million South African housewives have proved it. Lux is the beauty soap chosen by beautiful film stars around the world. They choose Lux for its rich, moisturizing lather. Lux, a beauty treatment as you bathe. Episode 5 of this story, in which John Steed arrives more or less safely, and Mrs. Peel chases the elusive voice of the Joker. George Fancy was dead, killed by a poisoned razor blade hidden at the back of a playing card. The playing card was a Joker. John Steed was quick to realize that the booby trap had been meant for him. It had to be the work of Max Prendergast, who had recently broken out of a French jail. Steed knew that another trap had been set for Mrs. Peel. She was in even graver danger than he was. Invited down to the country home of Sir Cavalier Rossicana, Mrs. Peel had found the whole setup more than strange. The only occupant of the house was Sir Cavalier's ward, Ula, who'd left after dinner. Mrs. Peel, alone, was far from frightened and dealt very capably with the strange young man who'd arrived and tried to scare her. The young man now lay dead among the laurel bushes and Ula, a wry smile on her face, watched the killer move towards the back of the house. <laughs> oh, tonight is going to be such fun. I shall see all sorts of super things. I do love watching. So interesting. Such fun. In the house, Mrs. Peel was beginning to think that the whole weekend was far from fun. She'd gone up to her room and prepared for any eventuality, a loaded revolver at her side. She settled herself in a comfortable chair at the foot of the four-poster bed and stretched out a hand for her book. It wasn't there. Mrs. Peel frowned and looked about the room. The last time that happened, I found a rocking chair moving for no apparent reason. This time... Could it be the window? Mrs. Peel got up and moved to the window. It was then that she noticed a vase of roses on the floor. Had the curtains knocked the vase over? The wind? In this fog? Most unlikely. Mrs. Peel stooped and picked up the vase. The stems of the flowers remained in it. 
The heads of the roses lay on the floor. They had been deliberately snipped off. Useless. Malicious and totally pointless thing to do. Kinky. She moved to the table, where she found her book and opened it. What the devil? She stared down at a distorted portrait of herself. It was a cut-out picture from a glossy magazine. Cut up, pasted down into a vicious gargoyle, a travesty of her face. One eye dropped out into her open hand. Did I think someone was kinky? Brother, are they sick? At that moment, the telephone rang. Steed, it's just got to be John Steed. Mrs. Peel left the room at top speed. She hurried down the corridor, swung the revolving door round and belted down the stairs. In the hall, she picked up the telephone. Steed? Steed? The line was dead. Mrs. Peel found herself staring at the wires. They were cut. She remembered they had been cut half an hour ago. Even Mrs. Peel was a trifle unnerved. And then... From the kitchen, there came the sound of a door banging. Mrs. Peel went to investigate. The back door was open. Well, let's hope whoever it is has gone out for good. Mrs. Peel decided it was going to be a heavy night. She put a kettle on, and it was at that point that she heard the sound of the small bell Ula had left on the dining room table. Next stop, the dining room. Mrs. Peel made it in record time. Who is it? Who's there? No one. Who's in here? Who rang that bell? The bell lay on its side, rolling gently to and fro. Mrs. Peel turned to go when she heard the voice. Emma. What? Who's there? Emma. Emma. Dearest Emma. The voice seemed to echo through the house. Was it upstairs? Mrs. Peel moved to the stairs. Emma. Emma, I'm here. I've come back to you. Emma. Mrs. Peel moved up the stairs. At the top, the revolving card door showed not the Joker as she'd left it, but the death card. Someone is playing Joker. Well? She pushed her way through the door and then heard the music. It came from her own room. Emma Peel remembered having seen a very old gramophone in the corner. She also recalled the coffin-shaped chest, which was filled with old 78 records, all of them this tune. She got to her room just as the record finished. Now, who the devil put that on? I'm fed up with this. Mrs. Peel, in a sudden outburst which was quite uncharacteristic of her, tore the record from the turntable and smashed it over her knee. <laughs> Nerves. That's what they're trying to do. Whittle me down with all these melodramatic tricks. Am I falling for it? Oh, not that again. The rocking chair. Well, this time I'm all set and raring to go. The far room. Characteristically, Mrs. Peel entered the far room at top speed. She slammed the door open. She stopped dead. For there, in the rocking chair, was a man. He was swaying to and fro. Right. Stay where you are. Don't move. The body turned as it fell. The strange young man lay on his back. A bullet hole darkened the center of his forehead. You can't get more dead than dead. John Steed, intent on getting to Mrs. Peel as swiftly as possible, was crawling his way through the fog. He was driving more by instinct than anything else. He knew he was heading west. Otherwise, he had to admit he was lost. Well, this is it. Night in the fog. Stuck. Lost. Hey! Hey, you there! Ah! Hey, you'll be out on a right a rough night, mister. You don't know a place called Rasikana Hall, do you? <laughs> I should think I do, too. <laughs> well, that's where I'm heading. How much further? You'll be turning into the driveway right this minute, mister. It'd be there under your very nose, and you can't be seeing it. <laughs> what do you mean... You mean this is it? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Just turn up the driveway. Blow me down right on the spot and don't know it. <laughs> Night to you. Good night. Oh, first bit of luck I've had today. 
her luck didn't last all that long. Now what? It was Emma Peel's car. Ula had left it carelessly parked halfway across the drive. Steed groped his way forward and recognized the car. Mrs. Peel! Mrs. Peel! Steed's voice seemed to echo through the heavy fog. Clutching his stick, he limped up the driveway. Best foot forward, Steed. The other one's not much good. Mrs. Peel left the small room at the end of the corridor, determined to get the police immediately. She was on her way downstairs when she heard it. That record again. And the voice. Mrs. Peel, still clutching her gun, walked slowly along the corridor, through the revolving car door, dear and onto the stairs. Emma, dear Emma Peel, dearest Emma, where are you? And who are you? Step out where I can see you. A quiet little chat. That's all I want. About old time. I don't know you. Oh, yes, yes, you do. Then show yourself. Where are you? Everywhere. Everywhere. Anywhere you run to, I'll be there. I am inescapable. I may be right away here. Just by your shoulder. You can't see me, but I can stretch out a hand and touch you. Mrs. Peel made for the front door. The key has gone, Emma. You won't get out no. that way. Let me out. Which way will you go? No! Let me out! Let me out! With a final heave on the spanner, Ronnie Miller finishes changing his flat tire in just 6 minutes, 32 seconds. Well done, Ronnie. You play any other sports? I wash the car once in a while. You look very fresh, Ronnie. What deodorant do you use? Shield for sportsmen, of course. Why? It works. Shield for sportsmen deodorant won't stick, sting or stain. In aerosol or roll-on, it's made to keep sportsmen cool and dry. Think what it can do for you. There's no dirt that can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water Omo. If you use cold water Omo, it comes out very, very easily indeed. Says Mrs. Sutherland of the Inneken. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. It cleans best. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo. The Avengers. Donald Monat as John Steed, 
and Diane Appleby as Emma Peel is adapted and directed by Dennis Falbig and produced by David Gooden.